I'll be reading from First Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Teach these things and insist that everyone will learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, in your purity. Until I get there, focus on the on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the both prophecy spoken over you when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teachings. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. We can now prepare our hearts for our benevolent offering by Brother Isaiah Moore. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the fruit and with the first fruits of all your increase. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the open you the windows of heaven and pour out and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Up upon the first day of the week, let everyone, let every one of you, lay by him in store, as God has prospered him. Every man according as he purposes in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For, <clears throat> for God loves a cheerful giver. It is more, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Blessed is he that considers the poor. The Lord may deliver him in time of trouble. He that has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord. Take heed that you do not your own before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when you give your alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. When you give alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand does, that your alms may be in secret, and Father, which sees in secret himself, shall reward you openly. worship and song. Nobody great, nobody great, 
Nobody greater than you. Help me sing, nobody. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody, nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Oh, nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody, 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 hey, nobody, nobody, there's nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over, searched all over, but there's nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater. If you believe it this morning, help us out. Nobody greater. Say, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody, 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 nobody. Looked all over. I looked all over. I searched all over. There was nobody. There was nobody. There was nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody say nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Yeah. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Hey, your name is above all names. You're worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Your name is above all names, yeah. Lord, you're so worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, your name is above all names, yeah. Lord, you're so worthy of all our praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Said, Mighty are the works of your hands. Lord, so mighty are the works of your hands. Lord, so mighty are the works of your hands. Lord, so mighty are the works of your hands. Come on, open your mouth and say, Mighty, 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 mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Come on now, say, mighty, 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 His hands are so mighty, His hands are so mighty. Hey, mighty, 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 Lord, your name. Is above all names, yeah. You're worthy of all our praise. Say, mighty are the works of your hands. 
Lord, so mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Lord, so mighty are the works of your hands. 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 Faithful are the works of your hands. Holy are the works of your hands. Perfect are the works of your hands. Perfect are the works of your hands. Perfect are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Say mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty, 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 Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Help me sing. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lift that up again. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Stronger. God, you are higher. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Now this is the part I like. And if our God is for us, who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then come on, you sing. And if our God, then who could ever? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? And if our God, oh, then who? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? And if our God, oh, then who? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? And if our God, oh, then who? And if our God is with us, then what can stand? Come on, church. Then what can stand? There's nothing that can stand against us. Say what can stand. There's nothing that can stand against you. Oh, say what can stand. Like there's no God like Jehovah. 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 
there's no God like nobody like him. Hey, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like there's no God like no God like no God like no God like there's no God like Jehovah. Nobody, nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like. There's no God like. No God like. There's no God like. Oh, no God. There's no God like him. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody, nowhere. Nobody know where, nobody know where, nobody know where, there's no God like, no God like, no God like, nobody like him, no God like the whole. No music, no music. There's nobody, 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 no God like. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great! Help me sing. Oh, we'll sing. How great is our God? Whoa! How great, how great he is our God? Whoa! Is our God? Oh, we'll see. How great is our God? How great, how great, how great, how great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All will see. How great is our God? You're the name, you're the name above all names. Lord, you're worthy of. Whoa, and my heart will sing. How great is our God? How great, how great, how great is our God, yeah. Sing with me, our God. All will sing. How great is our God? You're the name. You're the name above all names. The name above all names. Worthy of all praise. Our God, oh, Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy, Lord, you're worthy, yeah, worthy, yeah, He's worthy, yeah, He's worthy, yeah. You're the name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great our God.
Good morning. Good morning. I know that song had us like hyped and up. I need a little more energy than that. Good morning. I hope we are all are feeling great and mighty. And if you're not feeling great and mighty, I hope that you leave church today feeling that way. Because as life goes on and we're all having our hard times and stuff like that, I need y'all to understand that God has us in his hands. He has us firmly in his hands, secure. He's not going to drop us. I need y'all to put all your eggs in his basket. He don't have holes in his basket. His basket is perfect. But anyways, I see that we have a lot of people here today. So I'm asking if we have any first time guests, second time guests, even third time guests, if possible. I'm trying to put you guys on the spot without trying to put you guys on the spot. I heard we got someone in the building. I'm trying to see if you guys going to, you know, stand up and present yourself because I want you to understand that these, this church here, this church here, and do, the doors are always open for anyone. I need y'all to be comfortable with telling people about our church having your friends and family come and just be like, hey, you guys want to come to my church? You don't even guys got to be here. Just invite people. I don't got to go to church today, but hey, can you go to church in for me? Tell me what it's like. Watch the lives, please. Like, this church is a family, and I'm very comfortable. <laughs> today we have the Tampa District YPD Director, Ashley Hatcher, is visiting us today. Can we find where she's at? Good morning, church. Um, I was trying to be quiet. I just, I got invited by your YPD director to come and hear the word today. Um, I have been filled from the choir. I love the youth presence that I see. Keep up the good word, Victory. And now we will prepare ourselves for our altar prayer that will be led by our evangelist, Janair George. There's so much going on in the world. There's so much going on in our lives. I don't know about you, but it's touched our family a little bit here where we've had loved ones go into the hospital. I myself almost had to go into the hospital this week for an allergic reaction. And we need Jesus. We need Jesus to be Jehovah Jireh. We need him right now to be Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Because we just need him. Without him, we can't do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. So the altar is open for those who would like to come. Can you let those who are in the foyer in, please? Before we get started. Let them in before we get started. There's no God like Jehovah. Lord, we can search all over and we'll find nobody and nothing like you. Lord God, it's been a week. And here we are coming to a new week, going to see the end of the month. And Lord God, we just want to say thank you. 
Thank you, God, because we know it was not nothing that we did, but it's everything that you did. And Lord God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection that has kept us from danger seen and unseen. Lord God, we thank you for being the great I am. The Alpha and the Omega. Lord God, we thank you for your very presence in our lives, God. Lord God, we come to you right now asking for forgiveness. Forgive us for anything we might have said or did by thought, word, or deed that was not pleasing unto your eyes, like God. Forgive us for the omissions and coalitions of our sins, Lord God. We ask those sins that we committed that you throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. God, help us to do better. Help us to be better disciples of your word. Help us to be better doers of your word, Lord God. Help us to tell our testimonies that bring people closer to you. Lord God, we ask that you be with us. Lord, we need you in the hospitals. We need you in our homes. We need you in our schools. We need you in our government, both nationally and statewide, God. God, we need you to make a way out of no way, Lord God. We need you to break chains and break strongholds and provide breakthroughs that we've never seen before. Lord God, we need a fresh anointing on our lives, God. Lord God, we need you to find favor upon us. We need you to bless our going out and our coming in. Lord God, we ask for healing. We need you to be Jehovah Rapha right now, God. Be with each and every one whose name has been called throughout the beginning of this day, Lord God. Be with Brother Kinsler, Lord God. Be his Jehovah Rapha right now, God. Lord, be with Sister Erin. Be with her, Jehovah Rapha, God. Lord, God, we need you. We need you to touch our bodies, touch our minds, Lord God, so they, they can be stayed on you. Lord God, help us to trust you. Increase our faith. Increase our patience, God. Let it have its perfect work. So we're lacking nothing. Lord God, you are able to do any and everything but failing. Lord God, we're standing on those promises that say that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that by your stripes that we are healed, Lord God. These are promises that you made to us, and Lord, we're standing firm on them, and we're claiming the healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask that you be with us as we go in and out, to and fro. Keep us safe, Lord God. Keep us vigilant, Lord God, to see the enemy when they are coming, Lord God. Help us to be able to recognize it and send it back to where it came, Lord God. Lord God, keep us strong. Give us your joy, Lord God, for your joy is our strength. And Lord God, we need your strength right now. Lord, please provide peace that passes all understanding. As days go by, as weeks go by, as months go by, Lord God, help us to trust in you and keep our faith in you, Lord God. And Lord, when it's all said and done, we'll be sure to give you all the honor, glory, and the praise for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and all that is still yet to come. Lord, we know that even if you don't do anything else for us, God, you've done more than enough. But we know that who you are won't allow you to stop. And God, we just say thank you. All these things we ask and we pray in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen.
If you're dumb, praying for yourself, pray for somebody else. When you pray for somebody else, God add the faith in your favor. Prayer is not a selfish thing. It's a thing that you can do for anybody. And the more we pray for someone else, the more God activates and work in your life. So let's not be afraid to pray for someone else. If God has done everything in your life, look to your neighbor because he's probably still working in their lives. Yeah. In the old churches I was watching, the elders of the church, the stewards of the church, the wise women of the church, they stood together in prayer. It wasn't the pastor that was praying for the lay. It was the stewards, the deacons. They were standing in the gap. Is that you? Are you standing in the gap for anyone? My Lord, I'm glad somebody stood in the gap for me. Because I might have not been here today. Yes, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. From prove to prove, Father God. To the front door, to the back door, Father God. Do it, Jesus. This is our season. Do y'all know we in our season right now? To have glory. You have to believe that this is your season. My God is able. He's enough. He's a doctor. He's a lawyer. He's a mental regulator. He's an all in all God. Jesus. Y'all looking around all crazy, but you should be lifting up the name of Jesus right now. If you're tired, your car keys work. This is a house of worship. We should be continuously praying on our tongues over and over and over again. Come on, Holy Spirit, break through. Yeah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. Jesus. Yeah. Jehovah. Lord, we love Yahweh. You. Lord, we love Allah. You. Yeah. Whatever you may call him. But the name Lord, of Jesus. You. All you got to do is Lord, walk around your house you. and call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you. And the yeah. devil will run away. He will flee. Whoa. By the name of Lord, Jesus. Lord, we need you. My God. Um, I'm so glad to be a witness to what God is doing with our youth. So last month, we were graced with our youth to come and pray with us and preach over us and give us a dynamic word by none other than Sister Brianna, well, Sister Music, Brianna Vance, sorry. <laughs> um, and this month, I'm as eager to um, hear from one of our younger ones, um, Sister Simone, and uh, she's 12. So last month we had a 16-year-old and now we have a 12-year-old and you can never know what God is going to do and how he's going to do it and who he's going to do it through. So I'm just excited to just to be a witness to what God is doing through our youth. And I'm so excited for today's word because 
the base of what our youth ministry has been founded on is this very scripture. And so I'm excited to see what God is going to say through her um, and how he's going to encourage all of us. Um, but I'm personally waiting to see how he's going to encourage me to continue on doing whatever he said to do with the youth. Um, and so with that being said, I'm going to ask if Sister Nia can come and introduce our speaker today. Following the introduction of the speaker, we will have a sermonic dance, um, mime dance, by um, our youth as well. Good morning, church. My assignment here today is to introduce the speaker of the hour. I have known her for a little bit over 12 years, and she's been a blessing to each and every one of us. She does outstanding in school and dances. She is also a diehard football fan and even plays flag football. As much as others may see her as a quiet and reserved person, she's actually quite the opposite. She is oftentimes the life of the party in the Cabrera house. She's always making people laugh and is really good with coming up with things on the spot. She loves to help people and loves on everyone around her. She is the daughter of Nestor and Lachey Cabrera and the granddaughter of Carlos and Shirley Sanchez. She is the niece of Lenitra and James Moore and the cousin of Carlson Isaiah Moore. And I have the great honor of being her big sister. She has not only inspired me, but inspires everyone around her. She prays every night and we pray as a family every morning. God has something special within her and this is her time to let God do his thing. My encouragement for her today is do your thing, baby girl, and let God use you in every way necessary. Now I introduce her some and present to others my baby sister, Simone Maria Cabrera. Listen, it's amazing to me all the things that you do for me, and I've never seen your face. It would satisfy my curiosity the day that I see your face. You gave me the gift of life before I even knew who I was. You paid the ultimate price. At Calvary, you shed your blood, yeah. Oh, how I love you so. You supply every one of my needs. I don't always do you right. But you keep on blessing me. Ooh, it's just amazing. It just shocks you. Listen, there are times when I could feel you ever so close to me. You're right there, leading me and guiding me and protecting me. I never have to walk alone. Cause you're always there. Leave others facing me. Just know I'm in your care. Somebody see right now. It's amazing to me. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. All the things you do for me. And I've never seen. Not once have I ever seen your face. In a moment, there's a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven. And though we've never seen his face down here, at that moment we share, this is what's going to happen. We shall be holding, we shall be holding his face for the very first time in my life. We shall be holding, we shall be holding his face. Nothing's going to stand between us, oh no. I'm going to see. Baby. 
But I love you anyway. Said I love you anyway. One day we shall be both his Good morning, church. First, I would like to thank God for allowing me to be here today. To Pastor Price in his absence, thank you for the opportunity. To Miss Marquita for asking me to speak and believing that I could do this. <laughs> to my family for encouraging me and teaching me about Jesus for as long as I could remember. To my church family for supporting me, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Our scripture for this morning is coming from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, the message paraphrase, and it reads as follows. Get the word out. Teach all these things, and don't let anyone put you down because you are young. Teach believers with your life, by word, by demeanor, by faith, by love, and by integrity. Stay at your post reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching, and that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off and in use. Cultivate these things, immerse yourself in them, that people will all see you mature and right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't be, don't be diverted, just keep at it. Both, though, both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. The subject for today is, I understood the assignment. Yeah, yeah. Right. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Use me as you please. Speak to me and through me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. About a year ago, one of the most popular TikToks was, I understood the assignment. To understand the assignment means to give props to someone who has gone above or beyond to complete a certain task. Whether it was what they were saying, what they were doing, or even what they were wearing. If they gave it 100%, we can say that they understood the assignment. I would say that Harriet Tubman understood the assignment when she helped slaves escape through the an Underground Railroad. I would say Martin Luther King understood the assignment when he helped the Civil Rights Movement. I would say that Madam C.J. Walker understood the assignment when she became the first female self-made millionaire. I would say Patrick Mahomes understands the assignment every time he steps onto the field. I would say LeBron James understands the assignment every time he steps onto the court. I would say Barack Obama understood the assignment when he became the first African-American president of the United States. I would say Michelle Obama understood the assignment because she serves as a role model for black and brown girls like me. But most of all, I would say our savior Jesus the Christ understood the assignment when he died on the cross for your sins and mine. Each of these people understood the assignment. The question is, do you understand the assignment as a child of God? In, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, Paul is giving Timothy and all of us an assignment. Paul was like a mentor to Timothy. In this scripture, Paul is telling Timothy how to stand firm against false teachings of that time. He tells Timothy and us what the assignment is, how to complete the assignment, and the goal of the assignment. As I was preparing, I remembered an assignment that I had at the end of the school year last year in my science class. I had to make a 3D model cell. To complete the assignment, I had to read the rubric. The rubric is important because it is the guide to help you successfully complete a task. When I created my cell, I used the rubric to know what different parts of the cell I had to use to prove that I understood the assignment. In verses 11 through 16, we are given the rubric to guide us to successfully complete the assignment. 
So my assignment here today is to help you understand the parts needed to make sure that you understand the assignment. The assignment is made clear in verse 11. It simply states, teach with your life. It is followed by the rubric explaining how we are to teach with our lives. It says, by word, by demeanor, by faith, by love, and by integrity. So how do we teach by word? I remember VBS a few years ago. There was a song that said, always be ready. Always be ready to tell what you know about Jesus. That song was based on the scripture from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, which says, but honor the Messiah as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Whether you are two or 92, you should be able to share the good news of God and help people get to know him. Verse 13 encourages us to stay at our post reading scripture and giving counsel, teaching. Before you can teach with the word, you must know the word. That means you must study it for yourself in places like Sunday school, Bible study, and vacation Bible school. In my algebra class, one way that my teacher checks to know if we understood the assignment is by having us teach it to someone else. My grandparents would call me and my cousins before school every day and pray with us and have us recite scripture. I know John 3, 16 and can tell somebody that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Is the word of God so rooted within you that you are ready to share with someone else? We've all got to be ready to teach with word. Next, you said teach by demeanor. That means showing God in how we act. My mom has always told me and my sister to represent Christ in all that we do because we may be the only Bible that some people will ever read. Matthew chapter five, verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. When I'm with my friends, I hope that they don't just see me, but they see the God in me. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. What kind of light are you shining to the world? Can your family and friends see God in the way you act? What is your story telling when people read you? The third thing we need to do to complete the assignment is to teach with love. We teach with love when we lead with love. John chapter 13, verse 34 says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. One way to lead with love is by helping those that are less fortunate. If a classmate comes to school upset, you can try and make their day better, be someone to talk to. If there was someone around you who was having a hard day, you can pray for them. If you hear sirens while you're riding down the street, you can pray for the person where the ambulance is going. If you, hear, if you, write, if you see a car accident, you can pray for those involved. We can show love to anyone, even people we don't know. In a world where there is so much hatred being displayed, it is our job to live by the word of Dr. Or Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The fourth part of the rubric is to teach by faith. Faith means believing and staying true to God even when theme, things seem not to be going our way. Teaching by faith means knowing and understanding that God is in control no matter what the situation looks like. All we must do is look to the Bible to see those who taught by faith. Noah taught us that faith can save our families. Abraham taught us that faith can guide our steps. Sarah taught us that faith can do the impossible. Daniel taught us that faith can save us in dangerous situations. The woman with the issue of blood taught us that faith can heal us. 
An example of faith is if you are taking a test and you're nervous before the test, you pray before the test and you can do well. But don't get me wrong, you still got to study for the test because faith without works is dead. The last part of the rubric is to teach by integrity. Integrity means being able to, or being strong enough to do what you know is right even when no one is watching. Integrity also means doing the right thing Monday through Saturday and not just on Sunday. Sometimes I hear my friends making fun of or talking about someone else. I decide not to join in because I know what they're doing or saying is hurtful to someone else. Jesus had integrity because he did the right thing, even if people would, would make fun of him for it. Proverbs 28 verse 6 says, Better is a poor man who walks in integrity than a rich man who is crooked in his ways. This means that integrity is not about what you have, it is more about your character and who you are. Now that you know the parts of the rubric, you must put them into action. But unlike other assignments that you have a rather short deadline, this assignment is lifelong. Verses 15 and 16 say that we must cultivate these things and immerse ourselves in them. We must focus and continue to build our character. The goal of the assignment is salvation, not only for ourselves, but for the people who hear us. Amen. When we teach well. When I finished my 3D cell, I understood that the goal of the assignment was to demonstrate that I knew the functions of the different parts of a cell. What I hope that you have learned today are the parts of what you need to to live well and teach well. When we teach well, it is because we understand that the goal of the assignment is bigger than you and bigger than me. Now it's time for me to release you from class to go and demonstrate that you understand the assignment. Go earn your A plus and teach with your life so that one day you and those who hear you will hear, well, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I understand the assignment. The question is, do you? So I'm trying not to cry because <clears throat> the kids always make fun of me every time I cry. They be like, is Mar Miss Marquita pregnant again? And I'm like, no, I just cry a lot. <laughs> um, but it's just something about the move of God that you can't deny. And it can be a very emotional place. I'm so thankful for the youth because they continue to be a refreshing reminder of how we should be every day of our lives. And sometimes fear can cripple us from doing thus says the Lord. And for me, I've been on this journey um, and it's been taking me to some places and dimensions that I never thought I would go to. And there were some things that I had to release that were so, I was so bound in fear that I was going to get it wrong. But when I started to continue on this path to knowledge and truth, I began to realize that when I completely surrender and yield my life to God, that life is very simple and we make it complicated. And so 
I was having a conversation with a coworker of mine and we were talking about knowledge and truth and we were talking about how the history books are just continuing to be watered down and history is being hidden to the point where we have to go and seek and find. And I told him that what I'm realizing that that's exactly the way that God designed it to be because the Bible tells us to first seek the kingdom of God. And I told him and I said, I know it probably might sound crazy, but if I were God, I would sprinkle all of my knowledge in everything because knowledge is infinite. And so I would want my people to go and look in all things, everywhere, nature and communities and all of the systems to seek the truth because the truth is what will truly set us free. And so when I was saying all of that to him and I was like, I know I sound crazy, it was like something unlocked inside of me, something in unlocked in my mind. And I started to get so happy and so light. And I found myself talking to any and everybody that I could about all of this wisdom and knowledge that I now felt like I understood, like a light bulb went off. And I normally am a very shy, introverted person. But the last couple of days, when whatever unlocked in me and when I stepped outside of fear and let go of the things that I felt like I had to have in order to do what God wanted me to do, I began to do the very thing that Sister Simone has been talking about. I began to just share the word of God with everybody. And I was just so excited. Like when I went to go get my hair done, the girl was like two hours, we were just talking, 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 talking. And I was like, girl, you know, I don't never normally talk to people. Like I brought my book because I wasn't planning on talking to you. And she looked at me and she was like, girl, you lying. But I realized that that's what happens when you truly have a situation or a relationship or an encounter with God is that you don't want to do anything but share the word of God. Even if that means you have to step outside of some things that may sound crazy or it may feel like it's going to be painful and people won't understand it, but you know that you're on assignment for God. And so I say all of that to you because I know that there may be some of us here today that may be bound up in a spirit of fear, but you know that God is calling you to do something but you might be a little afraid. And the thing about it was, as I continued to talk to people throughout the course of the last couple of days, I realized that there were so many people who wanted to come to church, but there was a fear of coming to church because they didn't know how the church folk were gonna treat them. One girl actually said to me, are they welcoming? And I had to tell her, baby, don't go for the people, go for what you feel like God has for you and treat it like a restaurant. Like, you know, you go, you have your experience. If you don't like the experience, you don't go back, but you're going seeking something and you're gonna find what you're looking for. So I wanna pray for some people today who might be bound up in fear of something, whatever it is that God is calling you for, calling you towards, and you might not wanna let certain things go because you just don't know what's on the other side. And sometimes fear of what's on the other side or the unknown can keep us trapped. So I wanna pray for those people, but I also want to, as we're standing all around the church, I wanna invite those who may not understand what your assignment is. And you may not understand what your assignment is because you don't feel like you have a relationship with the very God and Jesus in which Sister Simone was talking to us about. Maybe you don't feel like you understand the assignment because you've gotten away from the assignment and you've been feeling the Holy Spirit tugging on you. And so you know that God is calling you to do something, but out of fear, there is something holding you back. Maybe you know God for yourself and yet you wanna have a church home, an experience where 
you can be reminded on a constant basis of who God is. And like Sister Simone said, this is a continual, this is an infinite journey. It never stops. We're always continuing to learn. But the thing about the infinity sign is that you just have to pick a location to start. And it's going to continue from there. It's never ending. So you just have to pick a starting place. All things. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him alone, him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus our Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time, in his present and beyond all time. 